My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to give some experience and an example for a simple file-based plain text knowledge system. So a structure in which you can take your notes and provide pointers and share what you what you've learned um, that doesn't have to be complicated because there's a lot of tools out there such as obsidian or notion or things that claim to provide an effective way to manage uh, all of this knowledge and um, yeah to take notes and uh, then to share this or to visualize that but actually it doesn't have to be complicated at all so uh, the case i want to make here is that you can do a lot of things already using linux using the command line using a favorite editor of choice I will use Vim with a few examples and you're pretty much good to go so basically what I have here as an example is just an example a folder structure that I provided um, as some demo on the temp so we have a bunch of subfolders here with a bunch of files and then we can just open them up and see you know what we have here so one of the most important things is that you can just um, browse and search very effectively so ideally think of it uh, that you would browse all of your knowledge uh, database or your knowledge base in a similar way like you would browse the files the code files in your IDE so you typically have shortcuts and you you know can quickly search and open up these things so in your IDE of choice you should ac um, actually know all of these shortcuts ideally and what we can do uh, for example I can open up a Vim here and I use uh, typically one plugin to manage all of these things uh, where we can invoke uh, something like files and then a search so this is provided you can check out my dot files uh, using this fuzzy find uh, plugin there so that's that and uh, for example I can say I would like to open up um, the file search here and actually if I browse through them then here already on the right you see um, a preview of a particular file so for example I say I would like to uh, open up a test text file or if I know the particular subfolder you know this works very similarly to code files I can say for example something like sub one a uh, two one you know that's that's already a fuzzy find so it's really a quick to type or hello text and then you know you already see this and then you can open it up and I can do this again now with a uh, with a mapping of course you would like to map uh, this to your key map so to open it up uh, quicker and then I have these files well in my editor basically so that's nothing new in the same way I can do a search for example so I can say um, I would like uh, to open up a search here so that's now about the contents not the file name so if I say okay uh, where is this foobar or some uh, hello world here in that uh, uh, JSON file for example so I would like to open up this and things like that so I can quickly um, well move around and that is just a very simple search actually and a, just uh, a simple way how to open this up in that particular editor so because I use Vim with this particular plugin in that case but you can do it in whatever way you would like to have so of course you could you know grab search and um, have this in a similar way where you say okay just search for you know this particular string hello what I just did with you know trying to search uh, this uh, JSON value and things like that so uh, this is of course impossible you can uh, take this file you can have some sort of scripts uh, that already provide this and you're pretty much good to go so it doesn't really have to be complicated usually having your editor of choice is very helpful already we'll talk about you know sharing that with multiple devices in a second and yeah that's pretty much it here if we would like to have some sort of tagging you know such as uh, hashtags or providing a context so uh, in order to well provide links between multiple files so there are a few things uh, that you can do for example uh, you can say you provide some structure that you just invent for example using a hashtag so you say you know hashtag greeting um, and then I can just say I would like to search for me that's leader F um, for hash greeting and you know you're good to go so these are the files that have that uh, obviously uh, the same works if I say I do this on a command line so of course you know again it doesn't have to be a fancy or complicated this works quite well if I would like to provide a pointer to a different file so uh, let's say I would like to um, let's open up these uh, both in this editor and I would now like to provide this as a actual well file link so say you know see the other file here um, what I can do I can actually provide uh, some sort of uh, snippets or ways 
that make my path available. So what, what is that? That is a Vim snippet in which I just say, okay, give me the current file path uh, or if I'm in the same directory, the file name depends on, you know, how you would like to have this. You can think of multiple structures here. And then I just um, paste this into the other file. So let's have this. Now I have this one file with the link to this one. And um, well, I can actually, I can also add this here. So the link to the other one, I just need to get the path here, copy it over. And now uh, this is the file A with a link to B and file uh, B with a link to A. Now um, uh, let me save this and now open up a one that was um, actually, let me get uh, this again. That was this uh, this particular greeting. So let's say it's one, one, uh, one, hello. So that's this one, hello. And now what I can do, you can uh, press G and F in Vim. That's another helpful binding in which you can just open up this other file. So what it does, you actually jump there, similar to what you would do with control click in your IDE. So now I can open up this, this other file here. So then I can also follow uh, these particular references, either again by search or by actually providing a path um, and then following it. So that's G and F in Vim to, you know, open up what is under your cursor that it thinks is um, an absolute or relative path. So this works here as well. And then, you know, you can just jump to the other files. Again, that's nothing new. We do this all the time as developers when we are in our IDE or even, you know, in a browser that we can do a quick search and a quick navigation. You just uh, need to be able to navigate to these files quickly. So that's that navigation and search. Now, let me give you another example of just a little bit more sophisticated examples here in where I created an example knowledge base structure, because what I typically do is, well, I take some usually plain text notes, usually in an ASCII doc format for a particular topic uh, that I'm now researching or want to learn about or a particular book that I'm reading where I would like to take my notes or whatever it is, or, you know, a client project or some something where you just need to gather your thoughts it can be a single file or if it's then more complicated then usually I create a folder and then it contains uh, is contained there. And again, on the command line, you can grab search very, very quickly. So assuming I would like to open this up um, again, I can start Vim either in the normal way uh, when I reside in this directory in my command line or I say something like uh, Vim and dot uh, that opens it up already in this, um, well, not very fancy, but working uh, Vim. Um, it's, I think it's called NetRW uh, or something that um, uh, the file explorer in which I can just open up something uh, like this. Uh, what is that? This is a, uh, a, a TIL today I learned file, which I just always append uh, some sort of quick pointers. Oh, today, by the way, now this works for this and this technologies and I just save it up for later. Sometimes I do this and then create a blog post later for it. It's just, you know, nice, nice to know something. Usually you learn something new every day, at least you should. And then you can uh, take out these, uh, these pointers. And in the same way, I can say, okay, if I learn about a technology. That's what I did when I researched things like Kubernetes. I would like to have a file with my own notes because that helps really with learning and I can store this there. Okay, the example that I want to show uh, you there is that, of course, I could also do this in this way where I open it up and say, okay, now let me search for something. For example, I could provide some hashtags. Let's say what are the learnings that I have for, you know, that I learned for Maven. And then it gives me all of these uh, particular things and I can just jump right there um, and say, okay, uh, what did I learn about this particular technology? Let's say Maven or uh, for example, for hashtag uh, Kubernetes, uh, things like that. Uh, this is the same way now just with, you know, a more uh, sophisticated example. So this is typically what I do. I say, okay, I have a uh, structure with, for example, my learnings, uh, something that I learned, you know, about uh, Java, about some other technologies. And this is just really helpful. Again, all of these things don't have to be fancy. What I typically do, I open up, um, let's say I have my uh, cloud native Kubernetes a file. I open this up usually side by side if I research something. So that's uh, thanks to my i3 window manager. And then I say, okay, I would like to um, have this in the way where I have the Kubernetes documentation side by side and I can uh, browse through this, uh, for example. So let's go to the concepts and something like, I don't know, workloads. 
and uh, then I can read through this while I take my notes in this way. So that's how I typically work and your um, window manager can help a lot with that. Again, you should really be able to manage all of these things with your keyboard or very quickly without, you know, wielding your mouse around. You can say, okay, I can, you know, make this bigger, smaller. Um, I can use a functionality that is called a scratch pad. So I can say, uh, put this to my scratch pad. That is uh, this windows or this uh, super key and minus. And then I can toggle it in and out and say, okay, I'm reading something here. Okay, let me quickly take some notes and I edit this and then I can um, undo it or, you know, toggle it out again and see that I can quickly take notes. So this is just really helpful and a way to quickly manage that. So again, my point is here, it doesn't need to be fancy at all. You can do a few um, or a lot of things with very few technologies, especially if you use uh, the command line, if you're on the Linux system, if uh, you use an editor that really uh, enables that. So Vim with just a bunch of uh, plugins is really helpful. And then you're good to go. You have all of that knowledge on your computer. So that means you have a specific file structure or directory structure in which these plain text files then reside. And then what you can do if you want, you can use some sort of file sharing software, either there's some file sharing, well, services, or you use um, an open source software that runs on your own server. So that's what I'm doing. I have um, a file sharing software that's called C file that is just uh, provided on my own server. And I share this then or I upload um, the particular directory in such a way that I can share with another computer or even on a smartphone. So then you can quickly access it. It's not, you know, the most comfortable thing, but at least, you know, even on the road, I can read through these things. It's very easy because it's plain text. You could even um, edit something there on the go, uh, although I would probably not recommend it uh, for a lot. But at least it's helpful. It's a plain text format. And, you know, with the typical command line tools, you can do a lot. You actually don't need another software. So now I'm very curious. Let me know in the comments down below what you use for a knowledge based system. Do you have an actual system being set up or do you just, you know, create a bunch of files and you don't really uh, care about it? Do you have specific software that you use? Do you use your editor of choice? Do you have some sort of command line scripts? Again, with scripts, you can do a lot, as you probably know, if you're in the Unix world. Um, yeah, let me know uh, down below. I'm curious. Um, also, if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks for watching.